So for a bit of background, what was it that brought Ryan Finity to the Elite League? Oh, man, I went to uh, – are we starting? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I went to – when I left the coast, I wanted to go to Europe. Um, and I didn't want to go to the U.K. I remember thinking, I don't want to go to the U.K. My, my roommate, my – uh, a buddy of mine was living at my house in, in Victoria and, and uh, Robin Gomez and he signed in Manchester actually. And I remember thinking like, Oh man, I just left the coast. I don't want to fight anymore. You know, that league is just full of goons. Like, no, no. And then uh, as the summer went on, I found it wasn't my style of play. wasn't that attractive to, <laughs> to Europe. I think I had some stuff in Norway and Denmark. And then uh, I ended up going to Italy and then from the moment I got there, I realized like, oh man, what have I done? And it just wasn't a good fit. Like, it just yeah. Um, so I didn't. Uh, I mean, I enjoyed the the scenery and kind of did all the tourist things, and you know. But I knew that I wasn't there to stay. I mean, I think from the first week, I from the time I checked in to the time I checked out, I was just looking forward to to kind of getting out of Italy. Um, and then. Uh, I think it was around Christmas time, uh, Sheffield uh, called, I can't remember if it was O'Connor or Simsy, somebody got in touch with me. And, um, and during that, during that, I remember during that season, we had the break, we had like an Olympic break or world championships break around November. And I actually flew over to Manchester to, to see Robin. So that was my first time actually in Manchester. They had the Christmas markets going on here. And I thought it was kind of cool. I didn't watch any games or anything, but I just, I was over for three or four days. And I uh, kind of did the Manchester tour thing and thought oh, this was actually pretty cool and people speak English. And so, yeah, so when I went back and then had, you know, I, I didn't know anything about the league. Like I didn't know, I didn't know Edinburgh from Sheffield, from Nottingham. I didn't know who was who, what was what, you know, who were the powerhouse. Like I knew nothing. Um, I was just so happy that somebody, you know, bailed me out of prison in Italy. And then, and, and then I went to Sheffield for half a season and, um, I think my first game was against Nottingham. Again, I had no idea about it, like the rivalry or what was what, and um, kind of fell in love with the the, the culture and, and the UK, and and then um, so I'm back to go back the next year for a full season, and then that's kind of where it all begins, I guess my my journey to, to where I am today. And from speaking to guys like Kevin St Pierre, Bruce Richardson, Kevin Bergen, they they told me that when they come into Nottingham, they're told you can't lose to Sheffield. Is it the same in Sheffield? Are you told you can't lose to nothing? Um, I think that first year, it was just, they were just doing everything to get me out of Italy. There was like, they had all, I had all kinds of restrictions. I, I had to play like three more weeks and I think I, I couldn't get suspended. I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. I, I, there, it was, so I think there was not a lot of talk about like, once I got to Sheffield, it was about like, how are we getting this guy out of here? Um, and then, uh, but the, the second year, obviously, you kind of feel the rivalry right away. And, and, you know, when you're going back, um, I think that first year, I think, I want to say Nottingham beat us in a shootout in the, to go to the final four. finals. Yeah. And they, then they won another shootout and another shootout. And then Corey Nielsen like scored 48 shootout goals to win a playoff championship yeah, or something that, like that. that. That's what started the, it was the that's what, um, how Rastas Lavrov and the Amiak is in the, I totally butchered his name then, I know I have, but that's why he's in Panthers yeah. folklore because he made all these shootout stops to win the playoff yeah. championship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny, he was a funny looking goalie, wasn't he? At the old yeah. school map. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wore yeah, number yeah. four as well, which is bizarre. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, yeah, now I'm kind of remembering back. And then, yeah, and then I, I remember I went to the final four that weekend and it was fun. I had a lot of fun there. And so it was kind of cool to experience that my first time over. And then when we came back the second year, obviously it was. I was glad I went there because as a player, like you, you, if you don't go see the final four, you don't really experience how, how actually special it is. So um, the second year we went back, I think we won the playoffs that year with Sheffield. Um, we had a great kind of a good core of guys. Uh, Maddie did a good job recruiting, brought in a lot of new guys. And that kind of started, that was kind of the team for the next two, three seasons. And when you get to Sheffield, we talk about, when we have guys on this who are from Nottingham, we talk about guys like, David Clark, Danny Myers, Mark Liebers, Matt Myers, helping guys settle in Nottingham. It's those British players that are at the, the core of helping imports when they come in. I imagine it's much the same in Sheffield with the likes of Jonathan Phillips and when you first came in, Phil Hill, Mark Thomas, Jason Hewitt sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, the British guys, back when I played, the British guys ran, ran the dressing room, you know, uh, and they weren't the older guys, Huey, Tomo, Jonna. 
they they kind of ran the room for in a sense, especially my second year, the, my first full season, uh, which would have been '08, I, I think. Um, they kind of ran the room. Uh, Maddie led them. I think Jono was our captain that that year, his first year, kind of full time captain. He might have taken over halfway through the year before, um, and they kind of ran it. And and you know, and and basically, you had to you had to fit in with them to fit into that team. And, and that's the way it's, I mean, I'm sure it's still that way with John and Alan and with Huey and Tomo when they're there. So that was it. And, and I was fortunate enough to, to kind of get along with those guys right off the hop. And they're kind of like in my little crew and I fit in with the Brits, which they, which was hard to do. They didn't let too many Canadians into their, into their room or their side of the room. So it was, uh, it was, it was cool. It was unique. And then obviously we just brought in so many good characters over the year you know, Leggy and, and Talbot and Dagenet and Munn and, you know, Layman and the, the list just, you can go on and on and on. Basic, you know, we added some great, Basic was a great addition to our team. Um, he, we, we picked him up from Manchester the second year. Um, so it was good. It was, uh, it was, a, it was, it's a real memorable time, you know, made by kind of being around so many special people and uh, Dougie okay. Shepherd's another guy that's still kicking around. So, yeah, you, you look back, we still have a group chat you know, all these years later. And we still, uh, I think we're, I think we're actually speaking today uh, with, with all the guys. So we still have about 15 guys on this group chat and we still kind of shoot the shit where we can. And um, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun, different, different time zones makes it a little more fun because you're getting drunk calls at all kinds of hours in the night and yeah, funny stories being told. So, and, and when, you know what, and we've gone through a lot, there's been a lot of, a lot of tragedy within that group with, uh, with everything going on. So it's kind of all brought us closer. And then that, third, that second year in Sheffield, from what I can work out, and this is one of my favourite things to talk about, because a player like you, the style you play, you, you, you competed every night. You were non-stop, no nights off. And that's why Sheffield fans love Ryan Finity and other Elite League fans hated Ryan Finity, the player. And that year, second year in Sheffield, you won your first professional championship. What did that mean to you? Um, yeah, it was special. I mean, it was special. Like you said, it, it's always special when you do it. And all championship teams all have the same kind of DNA. They all say what a, what a special group of guys they were before they hit, you know, and even walked into an arena, you know, it was just a group of guys that got along and, uh, away from the rink and, and brought, you know, brought that into the rink. And yeah, it was, it was, um, it was a lot of fun. Obviously this league's got ups and downs with, with the, the three trophies throughout during out the season, you know, you, you always get knocked out of one. So, it, I think to win that last one was special for us and it gave us a, to win the playoffs and, and kind of go into the summertime as, as uh, champions, feeling like champions. It, it kind of gave us uh, some momentum to come back and, and do the league and win the league, which is what we did. And then I think we, you know, we won the playoffs that year, the double. And, you know, I think I've been in every Challenge Cup final uh, <laughs> in, in history and have found every which way to lose, whether it's in uh, Sheffield or Cardiff. And, um you know, and that's what's one trophy never got. But, uh, but yeah, no, it was a special, special time, special group, uh, a lot of fun, great coach with Maddie. Um, you know, I think we went through a hundred different owners. I might've been Bob Phillips just the whole time, but you know, before Tony picked it up there. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was a good time. You mentioned, you mentioned the five guys who I've got listed here, like Joey Talbot, Jeff Leguay, Randy Dagenet, Steve Munn, Jody Lehman. And that was kind of like the core of imports in yourself. How important was that in the success? Because you kind of see it with Cardiff now, don't you? They retain so many players and they just build on what they do year on year. And kind of Sheffield started that back back then in those years with you guys. Yeah, I think we, we were fortunate enough to be able to bring guys back. And, you know, I think we we're, we're on the, probably on the right side of 30 as well back then. And, you know, a lot of youth. And, um, yeah, I think that, that's the key. And it's, it's, it's a, you know, getting tougher and tougher because our league is getting uh, more valued across Europe. So, te- so guys are actually getting bigger offers in, in uh, you know, other leagues. Where back then we didn't see it as much. I think guys, were, guys that came here were kind of coming to stay here. There wasn't a lot of movement. There wasn't a lot of big contracts being thrown for other leagues to, to the English league, where or if I now, you know, the, the, the big boys in our league have to be competitive with, with all leagues. I mean, all the way to the, the DEL, you know, there will be guys come after players. So, um, and there's good paying leagues around Europe now, where back then there wasn't really, there was a few, but they were tough to get in and, and they weren't really looking at us. So I think it was easier to retain back then than, than it is now. And obviously the school programs are always key. Um, you know, one of the unique things that about the English league that 
that we can never lose because it's what sets us apart from a lot of places. But, um, but yeah, you, like you said, you know, most teams now when, you know, they win one and the teams that compete for two, three in a row are, are predominantly keeping their core guys together like Cardiff have done. And then in that 2008-2009 season, I believe that's the first time you were introduced to a certain Mr. Bruce Richardson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Bruce, um, what a funny story that is. I mean, he, I, I can't remember how it all played out. I, I remember, I, I think we played each other early, and I remember hearing something about it, but it wasn't, like, talked about coming up to the game. Like, it was just... I, whether you know all the Brits are buddies, so I'm sure Clarkie told Jonna over a cup of tea in Cyprus or something like who knows, but you know, like, and then I remember, of course, Maddie started me that game and Bruce started that game, and then that's when I knew, like, oh, okay, this guy. And I remember I was young back then, I had no gray hairs. I remember kind of facing off, and, and he was like foaming at the mouth, he had the silver beard, and he just wasn't a big guy. And I remember, I remember kind of going and looking at him, like, oh, shit. And I remember circling back, like, okay, you better get pissed off here because this guy is ready to go. I remember circling back, trying to be like, oh, okay, well, better get ready here. And then, yeah, and then um, it was fun. And then I think that one was kind of obviously, I think Bruce wanted to get it going. And, I mean, he's such a good guy and such a good character. He, obviously, he wanted to get it going. That's exactly what back then this league was about a little bit, whereas fans love that and that rivalry and, you know, you guys had Berge, you had him. You had a few others in the Dur, I think, might have been there. But yeah, um, yeah. So it was, uh, yeah, it was fun. It was a good fight, and and then it just, I, I think we just kind of fought every every game. I remember, I remember kind of the second time he was coming back to Sheffield. I meant like, I remember thinking like, I'm going right after him because he went right after me that first shift. And and to be fair. He had a bad shoulder, but he fought me anyway. He's so like, I mean, they're just, they don't build him like that. I remember he had a bite. He didn't have a good shoulder that second fight. I think he'd maybe heard it the night before. So, but he, he stood in there anyways. And, you know, um, and then, and, to, and then I, I think may have fought again, but I remember after our third fight, we kind of just looked over each other in the paling box and then just kind of smiled at each other. Like, all right, <laughs> you know, and, and then, and then from then on in, it, it was just, I don't know. We just, we almost, we almost became friends, like competing, like competing friends on the ice. You know, we'd talk to each other. Like we, we had, I think there's just a lot of respect for, for one another. And we just got to that point where like, I think we're done fighting each other here. We'll fight somebody else. Um, but yeah, no. And then and, and to this day, like we, we still talk, we probably talk three, four or five times a summer. Uh, you know, um, he'll run players by me. I'll run players by him. And, uh, yeah, it's it's a, it's just kind of a unique friendship, um, kind of built out of that. So happens all the time in hockey, but it was um, it was a lot of fun, and you know I'm sure the fans enjoyed it. And then, as you said, that year you went on to win the league and the playoffs. Now that playoff final came, that playoff final win came in a two 0 win over Nottingham, and you scored in that game. What do you remember about that game and the atmosphere in that game? Well, they're always exciting. Um, they're always, always exciting. You know, anytime you get into any Final Four in, in Nottingham, it, it's such a cool, cool experience. I, I, I talk about that to, to buddies and, and people back home and just trying to explain the, the, how the whole dynamic of the Final Four works. And whether you've been there once or 20 times, 20 years in a row, I still think it's a really cool event. I think it's just an unbelievable event for fans. I always, I always tell my wife, I'm like, I can't wait for the day that I can just go to that event as a fan, just a fan and just – show up and you know and sit and you go with my buddies and go have beers and it'd be like just like yeah great guys trip or family trip maybe not so much a family trip but um but yeah I'd like yeah so going back I don't know it was it, it was um they're always intense games layman was always a stud I don't know if he ever let it go and he was always he was such a big game guy that we knew even if we weren't great he would be um and they actually had some of the, I didn't know, but they, they replayed some of these games on YouTube recently. So we kind of been able to kind of watch a bit of it. And we were so good defensively. I mean, we probably weren't the funnest team to watch, but we were so, so good defensively. We didn't give up a whole lot. Um, and then we had, I think we had some good offense. And we had six 20 goal scorers or, you know, a couple of guys that were on 18, 19 goals. So we had like good depth and scoring, but we didn't really have a, a go-to, go-to guy, but we had three lines that contributed. And 
Um, you know, I think was that the one Munner scored in? Did Munner I, score? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, Munner scored his second goal of the year or something like that with a, a half clapper from outside the blue line or just inside. Um, yeah, no, it's funny actually that 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 Munner goal is hilarious because Tomo, the guy used to always give me shit about going offside, and I have and I stayed on side for that one. I had to like little U turn at the blue line, so I always be like, "What are you talking about?" And I like look how good I stayed on side this one this one time when Munner rushed the puck up the ice. But uh, yeah, no, it's um. Yeah, it was special. Anytime you can win it, like you said, anytime you kind of, for us, for the North American guys, when you win that last trophy of the season, it almost feels better than when you win the league and then have to get up and go to work the next morning or, or two days later. I think that one just kind of, you, you kind of take that into the summer, much like when you win a Stanley Cup, it's it's over. You know, that's the last face-off. And so I think it is, it is kind of a, a more normal feeling for, for us than when you win a, a big trophy like the league mid-season. Um, and you got to get back up and go do it again. So uh, I think it, it does have a little uh, extra feel. And anytime you play for Sheffield and win in Nottingham, it's it's a lot of fun. And you you mentioned that how Sheffield weren't perhaps the most exciting team, but they were very solid defensive. That's one of the back then. That was kind of like the, you could every time you go up against a different team, every team had their own style. Like if you play Nottingham, they were going to try and score goals. If you go into Cardiff, you were going to get beat up. If you go go to Sheffield, it's going to be a low scoring affair. It's kind of the different styles wherever you went, and it's almost a bit like that now, but not to the extremes it was back then. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, and it's funny. I don't remember ever being like a trap team in Sheffield. I don't remember sitting here working on our trap or anything. I don't know if you know. It, I see that everybody was saying that, and then now actually, when you watch a game, maybe we didn't really watch a lot of video back then either. To be fair. Um, but when you actually watch it, you can see how, like, how we reloaded. We always had four guys, five guys behind the puck. And, yeah, and, and how good our D. I mean, we only played with five D, ten forwards, which is, like, now, when you look back, that's crazy with the amount of injuries. And we must have just been tougher back then. Um, but, like, to play with five D all season, and that's what we did. It's, like, you know, teams will go through ten now with the amount of injuries and – and whatnot, and uh, but yeah, like we we won that trophy. I think we had ten forwards and five D. That was it. Um, we almost had a brawl in, in warm ups. We had a bit of a we almost had a full on brawl. That yeah, it was intense. It was, it was that's it was a rivalry back then. It was a lot of fun. And after you win those two trophies that year, you decide to leave the elite league and go back to North America. What went into that decision? Um, yeah, it was just, uh, just maybe just a bit of a change and, you know, we weren't, uh, just kind of testing it out. And again, you know, we just kind of went back to where, where it all started in, in Peoria in that area and had some, had some really good guys there and, uh, guys that owned the team I knew really well. And then, like I said, it was there. And then again, kind of got pulled back in again to, to the UK and realized how much uh, I did miss it. And, and then obviously at that time, there was a lot of change in Sheffield going on. They'd kind of gone through a, a big transition of players. And, and, um, and I was, uh, I got a call from, I think it was Neil Francis to, to go to Cardiff and kind of shrugged it off for a bit. And then uh, uh, Franny's probably one of the best, probably nobody knows this. Franny's probably one of the best recruiters in, in the UK. Like, he could subcontract himself out if he wanted to every team because he, he'll hound you and he'll hound you and he'll hound you. And then eventually you cave in and, uh, but no, he was, it was a fairly quick deal, but um, talked to, spoke to Franny. Obviously I played with Bother. I mean, I played with Bother in junior. I played with Bother in pro. I played with Bother in Europe. You know, I just can't shake this guy. Um, so I played with him. So I knew him obviously there and, and then, yeah, showed up there for half the season and went back for, for another season. It must have been nice to have Brad Voth on your team rather than playing against him. <laughs> yeah, the amount of times he's punched me and hit me over the years. And I think uh, there was one time, I think I, I think when I fought Rempel, I was going after Voth or I just had enough. And I'm like, you're not that tough. <laughs> well, you're just big. But, um, yeah, no, it was good. He's a good buddy of mine. I mean, we when I when I lived back in Canada, obviously we've been here now for pretty much five years straight. Uh, we used to we used to always have a golf tournament. My hometown Bother would come every year, win the long drive competition, go home. Um, you can hit a golf ball about 400 yards. That guy, you've never seen anything like it. Um, but uh, but yeah, no, it was fun, and G was great to work with. Uh, a really good coach, really good guy. Um, and again, like we we kind of did some underdog stuff there, and 
you know, we had that first year we went to the finals. Second year, we pretty much were three goals short of winning the treble. You know, it was, uh, again, just a great group of guys. And, you know, unfortunately, just we weren't able to walk out with any trophies, but having such an incredible season and, and walk, you know, come up short is, is heartbreaking. But we still felt pretty good about what we did there, even though, you know, we don't have any trophies to show for it. And the way you, you the way you played the game, going down to play in that big blue tent, it'd be impossible for you not to pick up penalty minutes. But you kind of seem to make up for lost time for not being in the elite league by picking up 122 penalty minutes in just 28 league games. Uh, I, I think Maury Hansen's credit. I think he gave me, I think I got 30 minutes one day in Edinburgh from Maury. He gave me a 10, then he gave me two more 10s. And they, yeah, and I love Maury. He's awesome. He did a charity game with us when I was in Glasgow. I think we were talking about it. Yeah, he's like, I don't know, he was like doing Pilates on his hips. And he just, I'm like, what is a 30 minute telly get? Just 30 minutes? I didn't get suspended or anything. I just got 30 minutes. I'm like, oh, awesome. Guess I'm never going back to Europe. But yeah, no, I, I they're a little inflated. But yeah, no, it was, it was good. Um, it was fun. I like, I hated the the tent, and then I loved it. Like I hated, I I hated playing in that crappy rink. Now I'm coaching in like the same style, like same ice size. But I hated you. You hated going there. There's not one player that liked going to the big blue tent. But then once you start playing in it, it's like what I tell our guys here. It's, you, once you start playing and kind of owning the, this is our home rank, you end up starting to kind of love it. And it, it becomes real easy to play in and you practice every day. And it, it's such an advantage. And I think that was that team we had that year. It was, a, you know, both years that I was there, it would be a huge home ice advantage. And, and we played to that, to that uh, size of the rink. And you, might, you talk about people um, loving those kind of rinks. I, I had uh, Matthew Gagnon on here, like one of the first, ones we yeah. did after the lockdown came in and you could really tell how much he loved his time in Manchester with because the fans are on top of you in there it's loud when they when they get going it's yeah. a really fun rink to play in yeah he was great he was really good for us we loved him love gags here and he did a real good job uh in that role and I and I think he um I, I don't I don't think even I knew how how actually talented he was like he's got some some real good talent um really good on the puck and moves you know he's not just a, a, a tough tough fighter and but yeah he's he's you know a perfect modern day tough guy and, and he's tough um uh, you know so yeah we loved him and like I said it, it you know coming from what well, Nottingham to, to Manchester you know we always talk about you know everybody talks about the rink and stuff but we kind of try to tell our guys like this you know it's not it's not the greatest venue it's not the best but at the day you will learn to love this rank you will by october you will love it and, and when you know when the crowd gets going and it's loud and it's cold it, it's tough to play in and, and and when we play our style we're, we're very very tough to beat so it, it kind of you kind of go from like oh okay to kind of embracing what it is you have and you know we built a, a fairly decent little dressing room for him in there and you know, so the guys at least have some comfort. But at the end of the day, like we always talk about, but, you know, we get to live in Manchester and, the, you know, the housing's good and you're right by the rink and it's it's one of the best cities I've ever been in. And, and actually Altrim is, which I never knew coming in here, but Altrim is a fantastic little little town. It's It's got everything you could ask for. And like I said, our, our guys rarely go into, into Manchester because Altrim kind of provides everything you need for them. And so it, it is it is a good little spot. And, you know, I think we're doing a good job trying to, to, to turn it more into a destination place than, than a last resort place. And, um, but yeah, going back to, to gags and, and the small rink, it, it, it does become a lot of fun. And, and you find that guys have kind of career years when they play in these rinks. And I think goalies like playing in the smaller rinks as well. And going back to that 2009, 2010 season, that's one of the ones where you mentioned about being in a challenge cup final where it didn't quite work out, but something really weird happened in that challenge cup final. If you remember in the first leg in Cardiff, Nottingham with three one up, but for some reason Cardiff pulled the goalie. I can't, I can't remember that. Did we? Yeah, because but Bergy mentioned it when I spoke to him, and he said we we had no idea why they did that. And then he obviously went on to lose the whole thing by one goal. So it's the most bizarre situation. Yeah. Maybe he blanked it out from the memory. Or we'll Bergy was right. You have to get you'll have to get Big G on the on the horn. I'll, I'll phone him maybe. And be like, did they score when we pulled the goalie? Yeah, they scored the fourth goal. That's what Kevin told me. Ah, uh, you can't trust Bergie. <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I don't remember that. But I mean, yeah, it's the elite league. Things can happen. But yeah, yeah. That's oh, true. well, I don't. Yeah, in a, in a, in the first game of an aggregate, we pulled the goal. That's what Kevin said. But that's his word against yours now, sir. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I know. I don't. I can't remember. So, 
I'm surprised, but I'll, I'll, to, I'll do some research. I'm sure I can make a few calls and figure that one out. And then you go back to Cardiff and you get named the captain in Cardiff. What did that mean to you? Oh, sorry. Are you still there? I'm still here. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it was something that G had spoke to me, I think, before um, the year. Obviously, Vother was, you know, he wanted to move Vother into, into a less of a role as far as talking to the officials. I think that was it. It was like, you know, if we can just move some of this responsibility away from Vother and just focus on him playing. And, uh, you know, and, and the year before, I think Richie ended up being our captain. Mark Richardson was our captain, I think, at the end of the, the first season I was there. I think Vother got suspended a bit. and. Richie just took over the C. Um, it was nothing to do with against Voth or anything. I think it was just more to maybe alleviate a bit of pressure on him and let him focus more on playing as a fo- as opposed to everything else. So, yeah, it was it was an honor. Um, we had, again we brought in some great guys: John Pelle, Scott Matska. Uh, we brought Wellesley. We had uh, Tyler Michelle. I mean, guys that went on and, and did some incredible stuff. Um, Stuart McRae was you know like Michelle McRae were like our third line, like nobodies, not nobodies, but they're the unknowns and they, they, they uh, occupied our third line and they did an incredible job. Again, it was much like the years we had in Sheffield. We just had depth and scoring. Uh, obviously we had Beer, Briar, Pelly and Maska that, that were scoring every single night. And I think it was uh, myself, Bother and Haley on, on the next line. And then we had Michelle McCray and I think Sammy Smith was a Brit that uh, kind of came out of nowhere. Um, and then, yeah, 5D again, the Smith brothers. Yeah, I can remember everything, Stevie Lyles and that. So, yeah, it was, again, it was another great, great group of guys, you know, um, great city. Uh, and we, uh, we didn't start off great, but uh, um, we, we had a real good second half. I think we went on that run where we 22 or 23 games in a row. And set all kinds of world records for wins in a row and things. And- yeah. Craig, Craig, in the history of like two of my best players ever playing the elite league, Craig Weller is always mentioned for the impact he had that season. How special was he? Well, he, yeah, he was. I mean, he's such a good guy. Uh, he just kind of came in. We used him as, as forward and D. He was kind of moving all over the place, um, and then settled back on on defense. But he um, he's just so powerful, so strong, skates so well. Um, you know, like he just, he was a guy that could skate the puck out of trouble. He was hard, hard to, to contain. He was just, it's kind of like a, a man amongst boys at times out there. And, and, you know, he, he wasn't, um, you wouldn't say he had like the, the best hands and the best shot. He just, he could just control the play through power and speed and, you know, take the lug, the puck went into the, uh, one end of the ice to the other, and then he could get back and you just couldn't beat him in the corners. You couldn't get away from him. He, he just, he did all the little things well at, at a super, super high level. And, uh, and then he is just an un- unbelievable person, uh, family guy, off the ice, quiet, reserved. Um, wouldn't know he's played one game in the NHL or 100 in the SPHL. You know, he's one of those guys. So really good guy. Um, you know, he, he kind of, I think he, when he came in, he just kind of solidified a bit of, what we needed he was that last element I think maybe we were we were kind of missing at the start of the year and then that year you're also part of I know you came out on the wrong side of it but it's potentially one of the greatest playoff finals of all time that Nottingham 5 Cardiff 4 game yeah yeah depends what side of the fence you're looking at but yeah no that was a good that was, I remember that game it was I mean it was back and forth I think we took a good lead and then they just kind of chipped away and you know they got some some uh some fluky goals and, you know, like the one, I think it was, I can't remember, somebody flipped one in from the red line or something. And then Jeff Harim, yeah. Nikolov threw it over and Harima must have got a touch somewhere on it. You know, and Stevie Lyle's one of the the last few stand-up goalies in the world. And I think he lost his stick and I think Beauregard kind of spun around and put it on the ice and, Mm. you know, uh, yeah. So yeah, it was, um, it was heartbreaking, like I said, because we'd we'd come so far. I think we we were tied on points for the league, and they had one more regulation win. We lost to you guys, Nottingham, in the Challenge Cup, I think. Yep. Where was that the one where we pulled our goalie? <laughs> no, no, that would have been a semifinals. We beat Belfast in no. I, I can't remember. I can't remember. <laughs> I know we beat. But, so, I know we won the Challenge Cup that year. But <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, yeah, and then to go in the finals. So it was it was a tough way to end. But, I mean, like I said, when I look back, it, we kind of felt like champions. You know, we were, mm-hmm. like, you put a, a team on a very low, low budget. We didn't have, we didn't have the biggest, uh, the biggest budget back then. And you, you just, you know, 
put together all the right pieces and made all the right moves. And unfortunately, we just, like I said, we were three goals short from winning a treble, which, you know, would have been talked about for ages. But uh, uh, great time, worked for great people, great city, great fan base. I, I know all that winning a treble gives you grant to talk about whatever you want on social media. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, then after that year, you go back to Sheffield, but this time as a player coach. Yeah, well, it, it was kind of a weird year. We were, we were, like, we had such a good time in Cardiff, and I enjoyed it so much. And then they were going through a pretty radical change the following year. Um, obviously, I know G pretty well. And, you know, there, there was a new wave coming in, and we kind of knew that this team that we had probably wasn't going to stay together. There wasn't, you know, that sounds like everything was going down, money was going down. Um, and uh, I actually, I actually committed to a deal with Tom to do my master's in Coventry. Um, to be fair, and, and I remember saying, "Well, I'm, I'll go do my school because I, I don't even know if we were going to get brought back to Cardiff. It was kind of sounding like there was going to be a lot of movement, and you know, the budget's going way down. So, guys were pretty aware of what was happening, um, and uh, and then all ultimately, you know." They, they kind of went into a bit of a tailspin, I think, Carter for a few years. Uh, and then the new guys, uh, the new owners picked it up and now they are what they are. Um, but yeah, so, and then, uh, yeah, and, and um, kind of left there and uh, signed with Tomo and Coventry. And then I got the, the job offer to go back to Sheffield, which kind of came out of the blue. And I remember phoning Tomo and he let me go because I'd, I'd signed a contract with him and, he let me go to do that and you know from there a couple of years there four in Glasgow and now you know going to my fourth year in Manchester so it's kind of kind of flown by in the, the coaching side. And when you went into the coaching side of it as a player coach did it change how you went into like games against Nottingham as a big rivalry because you were an emotional player and, and early um, on you were an emotional coach as well. I think you I, I mean, the player coach was a tough gig. I, I didn't, I hated it. I hated every second of it. I was going back and coaching some of my best friends and it just, I just felt like it was like a scene out of the office, you know, <laughs> like it just hated it. I didn't, I didn't want to do it. And, and then my second year, I kind of got a bit more where I was able to bring in more guys that, that were new and, and you know, guys that I played with and, and I was able to go and just be a coach and learned a lot in my time there. Obviously I was still a young, young coach and kind of got thrown into obviously a big job and, and then was able to to go to Glasgow and 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 then really kind of break away and and, and give this coaching thing a, a proper run. You know, I think anytime anytime I, I had a two year contract and they Sheffield decided to look elsewhere. So I think anytime you you get you get released or you, you know they don't bring you back, you, you get a little more fire in your belly. And I think that's what I had when I went to Glasgow was a, kind of a, walked out with a bit of an FU on the chip on my shoulder and thought I'll I'll show everybody and and um, had a great four years in, in Glasgow, Un, unbelievable four years. Uh, you know, friends for life there. Uh, every day I still talk to you know I still get that Scottish accent in my phone from from different guys and um, you know and then uh, obviously Manchester has been uh, been a blessing as well. And I think what part of the unfortunate part of when you went to coach Sheffield was that's when Corey started to come in into his own as a coach in Nottingham. And that's when Nottingham brought in perhaps the greatest captain we've ever had in Jordan Fox. But do you remember yeah, that, Fox, that, that team feeling different when you – not because you wasn't that the year you started to suffer with injury with your back, weren't you, sort of thing? Um, well, I think it was playing. my second year coaching in Sheffield that you guys had that, that team. You had, uh, you had Fox and you had uh, – David Link, because I do have a question about Link. him. Yeah, Langer, yeah. Langer, Fox. Um, yeah, he was, yeah, you guys, yeah, you guys had a, a powerhouse team. Beckett was, uh, Beckett, who I, I grew up with, Jason Beckett, played minor hockey with him my whole life. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so I knew Bex, and yeah, I mean, you guys were, <laughs> you guys were dynamic, tough, good, you had everything that year, it all, it all worked out, it was a good, it was a, a good team. Because I, I remember having David Langer, I, when Langer came over for Lacko's testimony, I had him on here. And he said he was in talks to go to Sheffield, to, and that could have yeah. swung the pendulum that year completely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. He was he was looking for the school thing, you know, and and then Nottingham kind of got there, and yeah, yeah, he would have. Uh, he was. I mean, we went and watched him play in Italy. I think he got kicked out of every game we watched, though, when we went to Italy. He was in like the finals, but yeah, no, he he was a, he was a special player, big character. Um, you know, another guy I still keep up with, even though I don't really know him that well. Um, but yeah, he was he was he was awesome. Even even when he came back, you know, I think you guys brought him back for 
couple of games, he was still good. You know, I, I imagine he could still lace them up and, and produce uh, today. When he came back, I think he came back for like 20 or something games. And if you look at like the points per game average, he was top of the league then. <laughs> was he, yeah. yeah, he was a special player. You know, he, you know his, his ability on the puck and his patience on the puck. And he could just, yeah, he just, he just had, he just seemed to have that extra second all the time with the puck and he could find guys anywhere. And yeah, he, he was, uh, he was dangerous. A power play that he ran, I think he was behind the all the time. He was, uh, he was, uh, he was dangerous and he was a bit of a rat and, you know, you guys wanted to kill him. So he, um, he was a good character for the league. And then we put one of the games up from that season a, a month or so back and you sent one of my favorite tweets that I've ever seen. Someone said that the, the, it was the goal, Jordan Fox's goal that sent us to the league title. And you just replied back to someone, that was the goal that sent me to Glasgow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, there, there's a few goals that sent me to Glasgow. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, he, uh, I remember that was like, I, I mean, I think that, I don't know, probably made it like 5-1. I don't think it was, I don't care, was it? Was it, a, it was the three, it was like the 3-1 goal. But there was the game three, where one. if you won, you would have been one point behind Nottingham in the standings. And they won, uh, so they went three points ahead, and that's kind of that's kind of the moment where they got it. That, that was a close, that was a close run league that year, but that was the moment where yeah. it like tipped the balance. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, he, uh, I, yeah, I remember watching. I was like watching it in slow motion, but he had some pretty pretty slick hands, boy. He was, uh, he was so, and then they moved him on D, and I remember thinking, thank God. <laughs> But then he would just come from the D zone up the ice, and it was actually like it was worse. Yeah, yeah, that was a great team. That was a great team you guys had there that 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 season. And then you and then you make the move to Glasgow. What what did you learn from being in Sheffield to go into Glasgow? What was what was the biggest learning experience going up there? Was it about like you said, not taking any of your friends with you, sort of thing? I think it helps when you yeah you know, when you kind of go and you you're able to kind of just create everything on your own, you know, and, and guys only know you as, as a coach and not their buddy. And, and, uh, you know, and it, I think that was, that was good for me and something I needed. I was still really young at the time too. I think I, when I was 29 or 20, so I'm 29 when I was coaching Sheffield and, you know, so you, you learn a lot and you, you get, you know, you mature and, and then um, again, yeah, we walked into to a situation where, it, you know, uh, Blackie hired us. And when we went to Glasgow, I mean, I think, Kirsty Longmere was there, but she had resigned that that summer. Um, they had one guy working part time. Gareth Chalmers wasn't there, so Bergie and I showed up. I, I brought Bergie over from from Amy, and I think, and we literally showed up and we're like, I guess it's just you and me. And so we we just kind of dived into it. I remember we had, I mean, repeated nights till three, four in the morning, just trying to figure everything out and. I know uh, Neil was in the midst of hiring Gareth or a, or a Gareth at the time, and but until then it was just basically Bergie and I, you know, in, in a new city we didn't know anybody and we just we were just flying around doing our thing and trying to meet people and figure out where the housing is and and it was awesome. It was such a cool learning experience and and, and I think I think at the time it was kind of when I fell in love with the business side of the game and you know to be able to do all that and. And then, um, and then to grow that over four years from where we started to where we ended was was pretty amazing. Uh, had some great, great memories of, of what we were able to do there. And then, Bill, I remember, a kid, got a cat? I did, I've got a dog barking at someone. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, I remember talking to Bergie, and he said that he was so surprised to get the call from you to go and be his assistant coach because he'd spent the well, last three years trying to kill you. He said. <laughs> Yeah, 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 he did do that, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think it was a bit weird because I think Bergie is, had kind of gone in for the job as well. Yeah, he, he'd applied to be the head coach. Yeah, and and then, so, you know, it's always a bit weird to get a call from the guy that mm. kind of got it. And then, uh, but I, but I obviously, I, I'd known Bergie a little bit. Well, I just kind of knew Bergie from playing against them and, everybody knows everybody in, in this league and, and beyond. So um, we were able to talk and I think Bergie was uh, kind of got around saying, okay, well, I'm actually cool with this. And, and, and we gave Bergie a lot of scope too. Like I, I wanted to, you know, I wanted him to come in and, and be a coach as well. I didn't want to just be the, you know, I'm not a Eagle guy. I didn't need to be the, the head guy. So Bergie did so much work. I mean, I don't know if there's a harder worker in the world. I mean, he's his work ethic if you ask him to get it done it's already done you know he's, he's so far ahead of the game and he's going to be he's going to I think he'll have a great career 
as a coach, when he gets that opportunity at a good level, at a high level, he'll, he, he'll just take off with it. And, you know, and, and he was, he was half player, half coach that year. And that, that's a tough thing to do for, for a guy who, you know, a lot of the guys were a little uncomfortable, I think with, with his situation and, and, uh, you know, but he did a great job and he's a great leader. And, um, again, he was a big, big character for us in that first season fought. I think he fought Nickerson. He, he, he stepped up to the plate every time you needed him. And we didn't have a, a ton of toughness, but we had, we had some team toughness. And, and again, it was still a tough league back then. And, he was he was uh, oh a lot uh, break Glasgow was a lot to to Kevin Bergen for his time there, and you you and him took Glasgow to the playoff weekend for the first time as well, which yep. must have been a, a, a tremendous like, accolade on on in your CV. Yeah, it was it was awesome. I mean, we actually beat you guys Nottingham all the years we've been struggling, <laughs> but yeah, we went to um, we went to Glasgow. I remember we lost Chris Frank's wife went into labor or was about to go into, he didn't make the trip. And I remember thinking like, Oh, and he was playing so well for us. And uh, we, I think we came out of there with a three or four nothing lead. Uh, Neil Trim had a, a couple goals and then, but even then we, we came back home and I, I still think we were, we were, we were kind of shaky. We weren't sure where, you know, uh, but we had a great season. We had a great run. I think we, we were in second place, first place at Christmas time. Um, we had a, uh, with some injury problems and then tried to get healthy at the right time. And yeah. And then able to come back and put another good game in, in Glasgow in front of a sold out building. And it, it was a, it was a cool feeling. And I remember the, the year you had Lee Salters in, um, in Glasgow as well. You mm -hmm. almost, that was the year you almost won the league. Like you, I think it was like, mm -hmm. what, again, it was like one loss, I think somewhere yeah. like Edinburgh that kind of ruined yeah. it, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. We, we lost, I think, 3-2 to Edinburgh, we just couldn't score. We, we all played them. I think we had 50 or 60 shots on net. And uh, they, got, they got a couple of ones kind of back-to-back. -back and, yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it was heartbreaking. It was tough, really tough. I mean, you can pinpoint one. Like, you can pinpoint any yeah. loss during the game. <laughs> you know. um, but, yeah, I think uh, Sheffield, or Sheffield, I think, won it. But we had a good, again, just an unbelievable group of guys. I mean, unbelievable group of guys. We had toughness. We had skill. We had – a bit of everything. Uh, Matt Keith was, was our captain, you know, um, you know, it, we brought, uh, I was trying to think if we brought Mizey and I think we brought Mizey in the next year, but, um, but yeah, we, we had a, we had a really good group of guys and, and the year before, you know, we Ash Goldie had retired, Ed McGrain were, were studs and it would have been nice to put them in that, that group, you know, Kyle Jones was a, was a goalie that we gambled on really, to be fair, you know, he, he came out of the East Coast League as a, a split starter and then there and everybody passed him over and we uh we, we got him and yeah it was um it was a good group of guys to work with and again another group that we're still fairly close, you know, you still keep in touch with a lot of those guys today. And then after you had four years in, in Glasgow, the opportunity at Manchester, how did that how did that opportunity come about? I kind of knew that was gonna be my last season in Glasgow. I, I kinda that was it. I that was it. So um you know, and, and then obviously there was an opportunity to, there were some guys that I knew that were buying Manchester and uh, that were looking at interest in Manchester, a, a Scottish contingency along with a couple of guys I knew from over here. And it was, uh, so it was always like, well, yeah, I'd be a part of it, but we'll see how it plays out. And, you know, and then at the end, it, you know, we didn't, uh, that fourth season, it was, it was over. And, and that was kind of the smooth transition was to, to move over here and, and still kind of run the, be able to get more involved in the business side, but still be the coach and, and do all that. And um, it, yeah, you know, obviously leaving Glasgow was tough, real, real tough. Um, but at the same time, you know, I think, you know, we, we left it in, in far better hands than when we found it, you know, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we're real proud of what we did there. And then, uh, yeah, now we're, you know, obviously in Manchester, we're just trying to kind of build the same thing. And, uh, you know, we got off to a great start and, you know, and, uh, slowly, I think, uh, you know, the, the business and the fan base are, are growing slowly and, you know, but uh, I like what we're doing here. I think one of the most impressive things about the Manchester team is how involved you are with the community. Like you were always out and about, you were just doing, like, obviously you had that horrendous attack at the, show, at the Manchester Arena and you wear all the, bee, the, the, the bees on your shirt and things like that. Like how involved you are with that community in Manchester is, it's incredible. Well, I think, yeah, I think every team does, is involved in, in some form to the, to the, in the community. Uh, Manchester is a bit different. I think the people here are real proud Mancunians. I think it took a while to, to understand that. You know, I think we're still learning day to day what what that means. But um, and, and 
our fan base is close, you know, like they, they get to see us every day or because of the, the, the way the rink is. And, you know, um, I feel like, you know, our, our players know a lot of the fans and, and I'm sure it's kind of like that with everybody, but here you just feel like everybody's a bit tighter and closer to you. And so you, you get to know people and, and, you know, you try to do your best in the, in the community and try to find areas where you can help and, um, sponsor or, you know, get involved in charity. And, and there's a lot of it. It's a, it's a proud city when it comes to that. And, you know, we've, we've really, really fallen in love, uh, you know, over the years here, uh, you know, with, with Manchester and, and everything. And, Obviously, uh, you know, up until this year, we, you know, with the pandemic and everything going on, we, we really felt we we're we we're heading in the right direction. Obviously, nothing's perfect, but uh, we, we liked where we were going and uh, looking forward to, to having a strong finish this year and getting into playoffs and seeing what we can do and then building on it. And, um, but yeah, but now we're now we're kind of like everyone else. We're trying to figure out what what's going to be left over. And once we go back to work, we'll uh, we'll get the cookbook back out and, and get going. And one of the things about the storm is you know that if you're going into Manchester, you're in for a good game. And if Manchester are coming to your building, you're in for a good game. Because when you go to like the Nottingham and the Sheffield, you really build into that, that underdog mentality, don't you? Yeah, I think. I mean, it's, you know, the league, like the league right now is, it, it's really separated. There's some, there's some big spending teams that can afford to, to spend because of, that's just where we are. I mean, you look at the crowds across the league and, you know, great ownership and, and teams want to win. So absolutely, you know, we, we have to compete and we have to find ways to compete. And a lot of times we bring in young guys, first year pros, you know, and it, it's a lot of fun for these guys. And, and for, for our guys, they, I think they get up to play in those big games and, you know, they, they, um, you know, we, we kind of, we kind of roll with that, but, you know, we kind of want to also move away from that and become a, a you know, a team. Uh, that can compete and can expect to compete and, and the fan base that should expect to win every time they come to the rink. And, you know, I think we slowly, slowly are getting there, but there, there's some good, good, steep competition in, in this, uh, in this league now. And then, well, well as you say, the fans should come to that rink expecting to win. And you can really tell that you are building something there. When you get players like, you know, Henrik Samuelsson comes in, who's played in the NHL, you've got Matthew Gagnon, who you bring in, you put a lot of responsibility on guys, giving them, the A on his sweater, and he played a lot of ice time more than he played in Nottingham. You can tell with the sort of names that are coming into Manchester now as well. Yeah, I think sometimes, sometimes when when guys come in here, they get bigger roles, and, and you know, so you can get kind of stuck in a third line center role, or and move up to the second, and 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 then all of a sudden their numbers go go way up, or you know, and I think that that's something that we can provide here too is is an opportunity for guys to play bigger minutes. I think Kieran Long's a good example. You know, you know, a kid that came out of nowhere, you know, obviously he was with Mike Hammond. Mike Hammond's an incredible player. I put him on the line there. You know, he did some incredible things. But, you know, so when guys get the minutes, they're going to they're going to they're going to put up the numbers. So we just got to find those players that maybe haven't haven't quite for whatever reason. You know, maybe it was a depth thing. They're playing on a stud team that, you know, you're behind two. Sorry, here. Two two uh, two deep centers and you're a third line center. Yeah, it's going to be a bit tougher to to find the minutes. So yeah, we we always kind of try to recruit in, in a certain way where we look for those guys and, and try to give them. Which which makes it when they do come in and do what we expect them to do, makes it extremely tough to keep them. You know, so that our, our main thing is trying to keep these guys. So, but um, but yeah, no, it's um, it's a it's a fun task. It's a rewarding task and it sure is fun, especially last this year. We had so many first year guys and such a good group of guys and we worked so hard, you know, it's just too unfortunate. It ended the way it did, but um, you know, that, that's, that's kind of our, our motto is, you know, we don't, we can't afford to really go out and, and attract guys purely on finance finances. And, and, you know, I'm not a big believer in this whole NHL thing. Cause I've seen so many guys with NHL games come over here that are underwhelming. And I've seen guys like, uh, Farina come over here with some SPHL, some ECHL, and then there's not a team in, in the league that wouldn't have taken mm. Farina, you know. And so um, a lot of guys come over here and find their niche, and we're just trying to find those. I mean, Jordan Fox is a good example, too. I mean, if you look at Fox's resume, it isn't, isn't blowing anybody away, and he comes over here, arguably, could be one of the best players that ever played here. Yeah, it's a, a lot of ECHL, and then the Finnish second division, and then Elite League All Star. <laughs> Yeah, and there's a lot of kids, a lot of kids like that. So, um, you know, we're just we have to find them and hold them, and then try to retain them. <laughs> and then you you mentioned about the end of the the unfortunate end of the league this the last season. From speaking to Gags, he said that you were actually at you were actually at training when that happened, when the league yeah, was, was shut down. Ice. 
Yeah, we were, we were on the ice. I think we were heading into Sheffield the, the next day. Uh, I think it was Thursday. I don't can't remember. And, uh, yeah, I just got a call, and I think my physio just said, hey. And I think Jamie Tunstall was on the phone. He said, we're done. Shut it down. And we were kind of expecting it, though. Mm. Like, because I think we were the last league to yeah. shut down. We were basically saying that when the government tells us, we'll, we'll, we'll stop. Until then, we play hockey. You know, <laughs> it's, like the, it's like the pub goers. Like, I, <laughs> I'm not leaving until they tell me. Um, but, yeah, so – yeah, it was a bit, uh, you know what, we we just, that was it. Uh, but then our guys stayed on the ice for the whole practice. We still probably had an hour and a bit, and they stayed out the whole time. They played some games. You know, I think it was just such a surreal moment to, to kind of grasp. I think even though you expect it, you don't fully get it until it hits you. Like, holy, we're, we're done. Like, what now? What happens now? And everybody's like, I don't know. I, I don't know what happens now. I would assume we all get out of this country if you want to get home. And, and that was it. It was just getting everybody home after that. And then I, I can't thank you enough for giving up your time for this because this, this has been a lot of fun. I think a lot of people are going to enjoy hearing those, some of those stories from the other side of the fence. But I want yeah. to end this on three stories. Okay. I, want you, I want you, first of all, I want your favorite Kevin Bergen story. Kevin Bergen story. Oh, God. <laughs> that I can tell. <laughs> That's exactly what Bruce said to me. <laughs> What is my great favorite Kevin Bergen story? Um, geez, man, what is yeah, put, put you on the spot now. <laughs> yeah, you are. I mean, what do you what do you say about Bergen? I mean, he he uh, the one year we had him, he had he broke he fought broke his hand fighting Nickerson. And he missed like two weeks with a broken hand. And he had this like cast on his hand, but I think he like cut it himself so he could play like two weeks later. But then I think he had to like cut the shit out of his glove so he could fit his hand. So he pretty much took all the padding out of his glove. And then I think he fought again and broke it again. Like it was like, it just was never, I mean, that's just, yeah, I, he, he, I can't, he broke his hand like two times. I remember and he just, but you never know. He just kept playing and playing. I mean, I think he taped his glove to his stick, like just any way, like an old warrior, just any which way he could. But he was a lot of fun. I mean, he was a lot of fun off the ice too. You know, he's a, he's a good guy to have a beer with. He's a good guy to sit till two, three in the morning and, and go over uh, players or housing or whatever it was we were doing at the time. You know, and he was 24 cinema, which is what I love. I mean, and himself, man, he would he'd give his, you know, shirt off the back to anybody. He's just one of those guys. So there's very, very few guys like that in the world. Um, yeah, what a great guy. But, yeah, he was just he was just such a – he just wanted to win, you know. He just cared. That, that was his thing, and it didn't matter. He would self-sacrifice all day long to win. Uh, so, he was, yeah, he was, a, he was a special guy, definitely a special guy. He'd be a friend for life now. And which is bet, which is a lot nicer than him chasing you around asking him to fight every shift. And I told him to go find Munner. Go find Munner. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and yeah. then, and then with the way you played the game, as I say, you got in trouble with like Maury Hansen for whatever reasons. What is the best chirp you would say you've ever given and the best chirp you've received? Oh man, chirp. <laughs> I, I don't know. Best chirp I can. <laughs> I don't know. I just, uh, I don't know. They, you can never think of them. They just kind of come to you. Um, I, it would be, I couldn't even, that's when I see yeah, guys all over me. Usually guys weren't chirping me. They're just like jumping on me or punching me. <laughs> just like, yeah. I mean, I don't know. We used to always chirp guys about power play time. Like if, if the team was on the power play and, you know, there was a player out there that you didn't think would be out there. You hear the bench usually chirping them like, <laughs> hey, there's a buddy, there's a power play. Like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing out here? You know, there's always tons, tons, tons of that. We, we used to chirp. Everybody used to chirp each other about how shitty we were. And then you'd all hear, like, we're in the same league. We're in the, what are you talking? We're in the same league. Yeah. Guys would always say that. You know, you're like, you're, you're like, I'm in the same league as you. And you're like, ah, yeah, you are. Yeah. How'd that happen? I mean, we had that Andrew Sharp. He was, he was, uh, you remember Sharpie? Yeah. <laughs> Character. He, he got like a 25 game suspension. And if, if like in Cardiff that one time, 
mm. and he had zero, like zero seconds of ice time. Yeah, <laughs> he, he didn't he didn't hit the ice once and got a twenty five game suspension. He was such a he was so funny, so funny. I mean, he was British. He was our fighter, and he would fight. He would fight Hulk Hogan anywhere in the world. Like this guy would fight anytime, anywhere, anybody. <laughs> you know, well, we've got a game where he fight. We've got a game here where he fights Ruman Nadeau. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 and that, that was the game that I think Mizey, my Danny Myers. Yes, he went to center, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> yeah, but I think I think because Clark, um, Kirkshank and Nadir were fighting. Yeah, there was right someone at that face off. There was like a chat at the center at the face off with you and Danny Myers. There was someone on the left wing and someone on the right wing. I think everyone was just ready to go for some reason in that game. Well, I was. I think it was Nadir and, and Shanker. We all knew were fighting from something happened the game before, and and then all of a sudden Myers was taking the face off. I'm like, what is going on? I'm like, you right now? I remember all I remember saying is like, we'll get kicked out of the game, right? When we get, I remember like asking Morty, like we. He's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he just kept like, all right, let's go. And I didn't do anything. And he's another good, uh, good buddy. Obviously, I bought him to Sheffield. He's another yeah. guy. He keeps... It's funny, man. Like, uh, you know what? Like, there, there was like a lot of hatred, and there was like a lot of passion when we played. But once that game was over, like guys, just you know, you pass. If I pass one, if I was in Sheffield or Nottingham, and I pass one of the players, like you'd end up talking forever. You know, like I played with Sean McCaslin. We, him and I played together when we were kids. I think we 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 fought each other in junior, and our dads were at the game together, and we thought it'd be fun just to fight in Calgary. So we, I think we fought each other in Calgary, and our dads were sitting next to each other at the game. You know, he was I was in Medicine Hat, and he was in Calgary. But um, yeah, like there's a there's a lot of crossover, but you know, you definitely miss that passion and and that that. You know, hopefully we get it back there again in, in, in the hockey. It's it's always fun to have brings a little extra element to the games. And you can see you even see that when like even if we share something from like two thousand and ten on social media, if it's a fight, it's, it almost gets more reaction than goals get, sort of thing. So that's uh, kind of, like elite league fans have been brought up on that style and they and every time they get it, that's what they love. Yeah, I mean that's I think that's typical of hockey fans, I think, across the world, you know. A lot of a lot of them couldn't tell you who the leading scorer was, but they can tell you who Gagnon was or you know how many fights Cornish had or you know that that's just it I mean it's it's they're the characters of the of the team and you know it's an unsung role it was a, it's a tough role to play boy and you know a lot of those guys did a, a, a good job for a lot of years against <laughs> a lot of tough tough boys and you can tell that with like with, with guys like yourself with Bruce Richardson who played that that like the game on the edge on the on the edge of it where they're the ones that the fans connect like we had it when Tuz and Young came in for six games for 10 games this year as soon as you get a player like that who plays on the edge, that they're who the fans gravitate to. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, I think they like that player. I think they they can, I don't know, identify themselves or I don't know. They this maybe it's because they're different, you know. Mm. And, and we see it. We got like Tyson Fawcett's a player that's kind of like that for us. And yeah, you know, you're right. The the fans seem to to kind of like those guys. And you know, but that that's just one role. And there's a lot of, you know, a lot a lot of a lot of big roles that, that, you know, defensive defensemen that don't get a lot of credit mm -hmm. and, you know, everybody, that's the beauty of hockey is that within the dressing room, everybody kind of has, has its own identity and we all respect that. And, you know, but like you said, you're right, you know, the fans migrate the, the jerseys, you know, when you look at the jerseys on the back every year, it's predominantly three or four guys that take up, you know, most of the names on the back of the supporters and then they shuffle as, a, as, a, as the seasons go on. But, you know, you don't you don't get a twenty players spread out evenly across a fan base of wearing their jerseys. It's, we all want that that one or two guys. So it's it's a lot of fun, and you know, and like I said, I hope I hope the game, I hope the game stays like that. I hope we keep bringing guys like that through. I know we are changing and we are adapting, but at the same time, I think I, I still like in Britain. I still think fans still want that. They still want to see that competitiveness and and that and that and that spark. And you know, if that leads to a, a couple of scuffles, well. Than it does, but uh, I think uh, I think the passion's definitely got to be there, and you know that's why the rinks are full. That's why we, you know, we're we, we get sold out buildings a lot of places, and you know the Brit the Brits want the British fans want it, you know, and so it's um it's good. I, I like that tough element. I, I always like my teams to have it, anyways. Well, you said with like guys like Jay Rosehill and um, Dane Byers, sort of thing. Matthew Gagnon. There's mm -hmm. always that element in Manchester. 
Yeah, yeah, I think I've had that everywhere. Um, you know, I think we had it in Glasgow, and and the teams when I didn't have it, I noticed I I didn't I, you know, I didn't like to get picked on. I didn't like to, my team to be intimidated. Um, you know, I, I like the ten percent rule, like that. When you have it, you get everybody plays a bit ten percent tougher and bigger and more confident. When you don't, you play ten percent kind of less confident. And it's uh, it's uh, it's an uncomfortable feeling. So even though even though the fighting's out of the game, you still want that. You still want that stability there, and you still want that that uh, that team toughness. I think. So you've been a, a a coach in the elite league for nine years, around nine years now. What <laughs> would Ryan Finnerty of twenty twenty go and tell the Ryan Finnerty of two thousand eleven going into his first job in Sheffield? as a coach oh geez <laughs> um it's tough i mean it's tough to kind of bottle it i think you just kind of i mean you mature and you grow as a person but at the same time i mean i'm still kind of myself i'm still it's a, you know paul thompson said it takes five years to get the player out of you you know and then you become a, a full coach and he's right he's right you know but it's funny you, you kind of go into something and, and i don't know if it's natural or something but you kind of become somebody you, you expect yourself to be, if that makes sense. Mm. And then as time goes on, you just end up coming right back to who you are and, and you find that it's just easier to be who you are and speak the same way to the, the janitor all the way to your top scorer to the prime minister, you know, show some respect. And then, you know, I mean, obviously I still, for me, I'm still competitive. I still get passion. I still get pissed off and I don't, you know, I, I don't think I'm part of the PC brigade at all right now. I'm still kind of, I, I still, like to to address hockey in, in a certain matter and you know i like my guys to play with some passion and mm. you know i like to carry that on and off the ice and in the room but at the same time i'm you know i'm pretty pretty approachable you know and um pretty down to earth i think and kind of i think grew up right with good family support and so yeah it's, you know as far as that i i'd say you know don't ever be you know try and try not to be something you think you've got to be just kind of be you and, and adapt and and just keep the same principles you've always had and, you know, keep learning. There's a lot of learning in this game, you know, keep stealing drills, keep stealing ideas, keep, keep doing that. And yeah, it's a, it's a fun journey. It's a fun journey. And I, you know, it's kind of like, you can't really bottle it and say, here's, here's it. Cause it's so unique to everybody, how they coach and how they, how they approach it from every coach in our league would do something completely different than the other guy. And, you know, it's hard to say who's who's right and who's wrong. You know, some days I'm right, some days I'm wrong. You know, one thing you just wake up the next morning and go at it again. And then finally, because this is obviously a this is a Panthers show, how would Ryan Finity describe his relationship with the Panthers fans? <laughs> oh, I've got some good Panthers fans. There's, I, I think over the years it's calmed down. I think obviously in the heat of the moment it was never ever good, you know. But that you know that was our you know that was that was it. I mean they were the big rival, you know. Beautiful arena, always sold out, and and uh, and it was a hard hard place to win. So when you did win, you you wanted to enjoy it, you know. And yeah, no, it was you know. But over over time, I think I think I've I've got to know a lot of a lot more off the ice. I think a lot of people have got to know me more as a person than a player. I think. Um, Sorry, I keep. Um, I think that's one thing is, is people kind of perceive you as how you were as a player and, and think that's how you are as a person. And I never liked that, actually. I never did like that. You know, I always thought, oh, I'm actually not that guy at all. You know, yeah, I'm actually you know, nice. And, and, yeah, I'm not. That's not. Yeah, I could I could see where you're coming from. But I think everybody's <laughs> like that. You know, I think all in all, you know, all, you know, who they are on the on the pitch or on the ice is is an indicative of, of that mm -hmm. person. And, you know, and. Uh, it's especially tough in the social media world where anybody can say anything anytime they want, whether it's true or not. And bad news carries more than good news. So, yeah. So I know, I think, um, I think it's okay. Obviously, you know, walk around, I've been in the arena, come to a couple of games and, and man, it takes me 45 minutes to get to my seat because, you know, fans want to talk and say hi and they're always friendly and, you know, people are good people. It's sports is sports. And then once it's, once you move it away, everybody's, Everybody's a good a good person deep down, and especially those that give up their time and support teams and they're around the British Elite League. They're they're good fans. Awesome. Well, I'd say thank you for this, right? This has been this has been so oh. much fun. I've enjoyed. I've loved it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's awesome. Yeah. Now I got. I'm sure my wife is just waiting for her to throw my little my little girl at me so she can go, get on. <laughs> I can hear her downstairs just <laughs> running her wild. So. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, get out and enjoy a bit of sun here in Manchester for the next 22 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> well, you, you got to enjoy that Thursday that you wanted to enjoy at least. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, 
Yeah. All right, man. Well, thanks a lot for having well, me. Well, thanks a lot, Ryan. I'll speak to you. Hopefully see you next season. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully sooner than later. <laughs>